Quiz Prep Chapter 1 All right, let's get started over here with Chapter 1 Quiz Prep. So uh, the first few questions are about the scenario. So let's read the scenario. You work at a central lab where patients come to have blood drawn, urine analyzed, etc. And lately there have been complaints about long waits for the patients. So you decide to do a survey. Among the questions on your survey instrument are, so here are the two questions on our little survey instrument. Question A goes, when you came to the lab today, how long did you wait in the waiting room before you were called? And then the person is supposed to fill in however many minutes that they were waiting, okay? Then question B is how satisfied are you with how long you had to wait in the waiting room today? And you have a choice. It's A, very satisfied, B, somewhat satisfied, C, somewhat dissatisfied, and D, very dissatisfied. All right, so the, we're gonna have a few questions about this little survey. Okay, let's get started with question one. How would you classify variable A above? So remember variable A was this one, how long that they've been uh, waiting here in the waiting room, right? So uh, that's a certain amount of minutes, right? So what kind of a variable is that? Let's look at our choices. So A is, it is a qualitative nominal variable and B is it is a qualitative ordinal variable and what you remember maybe is that qualitative means like categorical and quantitative C, C and D that means like numerical like number of minutes so already we know that it, it, it can't be this first one because of the qualitative here and it can't be the second one so let's eliminate those so it's got to be C or D now I just want to call attention to D see this nominal nominal only applies to qualitative um, and so this can't be it so remember how a ratio variable has a true zero so if someone came into the lab and they waited zero minutes then it would be a quantitative ratio variable you know with a true zero right so it doesn't matter how many minutes they wait this has got to be therefore a quantitative ratio variable all right, so you probably guessed this was the next question is how are we going to classify variable uh, B here, right? So uh, let's look at that. How satisfied are you with how long you had to wait in the waiting room today? So very somewhat, somewhat dissatisfied, very dissatisfied. Well, we can see it's categorical, right? Because you have to choose between one of those uh, four categories. And you'll also see A, B, C, D, the choices are the same as in question one. So now we know quantitative is wrong, right? For this, because it's, it's categorical, it's qualitative. So we're gonna cross those out. But now we have to decide between nominal and ordinal. Now, I just wanna remind you, the word ordinal has like ord in it, like order. So you can put these in order. There's a hierarchy, very satisfied, somewhat satisfied, somewhat dissatisfied, very dissatisfied. So that's gonna mean that that's an ordinal variable. If it was something else, like for instance, race, or like what school you're from, you can't rank those in a hierarchy. Those are nominal. So if it's a category that can't be ranked, it's nominal. Um, but that's not the situation here because this is a level of satisfaction, so that's ordinal. And so therefore B is the correct answer to question two. Okay, so now we'll move on to question three. For sampling in your survey of patients of the central lab, you choose to approach every third patient who checks into the lab and invite him or her to do your survey. So what kind of sampling is this? Let's look at our choices. We have cluster, convenience, stratified, and systematic. So we'll start with cluster. Now we know that cluster has to do with geography, right? And we don't see any geography in this, so it's not gonna be that. We also know that convenience is convenient and approaching every third patient is not very convenient. You, if you just ask everybody, it would be convenient. Stratified is where, uh, like the word stratum, you put people in groups first and then you separate them and then you sample from the groups. Well, we don't see anybody going into the groups. So it's systematic, right? Because every third patient, you know, that's where you start at a certain place and then you go every so many. So the answer to three is D. Okay, let's move on to question four. So you have a teenage son who is in a small public high school of 400 students. Now at this point, you should probably think, okay, that's probably a population, okay? 
So you learn that 200 of these students, or 50%, have at least one parent who is an immigrant, assuming the school constitutes a population. So there we go. There's our keyword, population, because we're not going to be able to know whether we're talking about a sample or a population unless somebody defines what the population actually is, okay? So assuming the school constitutes a population, is 50% a parameter or a statistic? So let's remember, P for parameter, S for statistic. Since the school constitutes a population and half of the school has uh, at least one parent who is an immigrant, then we must be talking about a population parameter, right? If we just took some of the students from that 400 of the school, then we'd have a sample, and we'd have a sample statistic, okay? So the, the correct answer here is parameter. But then let's look at the future questions, and you'll see that some of the answers might be statistic. Okay, so now let's look at the next question, question five. So you are a guest speaker in your son's health class of about 30 students from the school of 400 in the last question. So you ask for a show of hands of which students in that particular class have at least one parent who is an immigrant. So in other words, we're taking the same measurement, but we're not taking it of the whole population, just a small group within it. So you see of these 30 students, 10 hands are raised. So you calculate that 33% or 10 divided by 30, of the class has at least one parent who is an immigrant. So again, the school constitutes a population. So is the big question then is, are we talking 33% is a parameter or is it a statistic? Now, I kind of gave it away in my little narration of this question because I'm pointing out if you only take 30 students of that 400 and you find that 10 of them um, have parents who are immigrants, you're really looking at just a statistic because you took the sample here. This is a sample. Um, and so therefore the answer is B. So continuing with the high school example, question six. When you asked for a show of hands in the class, remember the class was a sample, what type of sampling were you doing? So think about the cluster. We already can rule that out because we didn't, aren't talking about like geography. And we know if you go down to stratified, remember putting people in groups, we just did, went over that and it's not that. Then remember the answer to the previous question, how we did systematic sampling. We took every so many, every third in that um, example. Well, we're not doing that here. And boy, is it darn convenient to ask for a show of hands. OK, now we move on to the study design question. So forget about the high school and forget about the central lab. And here we go, question seven. So you conduct a study surveying female nursing students over time about their intention to become pregnant and whether or not they actually become pregnant. So what kind of study design is this? First, we have a choice of the observational study here. Observational, meaning observe, right? And what does observe mean? Well, you don't intervene. You're not telling them to become pregnant or to take birth control or anything like that. You're just observing what they're doing. Okay, um, so that's the cho first choice. Then the second choice is experiment, and that what separates experiment from observational study is exactly that. You're um, putting people in groups and telling them one group to do a certain thing and another group to do a certain thing, and that's not what's happening here. So, of course, we're going to go for the observational study. Okay, question eight. You enroll nursing students in a study. So look at you. You're a researcher, right? So half of these nursing students take this class that you're taking, and the other half take the same class taught by a world famous professor. Um, and so, uh, sorry, uh, those of you who get me, get me, and those of you who get the world famous professor maybe are going to get a better education. Now, you want to see if nursing students learn more when taught by a world famous professor, but it's important that you assign them, right? Um, and so if you assign them to the two different classes, then you can evenly balance it between um, those who are really interested in their career who might want to go for the world famous professor and those who are maybe just interested in getting by who would go with me, unfortunately. But anyway, um, so that's why if you had this as an observational study, there'd be a lot of bias. So this is important. You're the researcher. You have to assign the groups. And that's what makes this answer B experiment. All right, finally, we get to the last questions here, questions nine through 12. 
match the research mistake to the type of mistake it is or will result in. Let's go over the choices. Um, first we have A, which is under coverage, okay? So under coverage means, what does it mean? Well, it means when you're sampling and you don't do a good job of sampling, you miss out a whole subpopulation from your sample. They don't show up in the sampling frame. So under coverage, the key there is sampling, okay? Now let's look at the next one, which is faulty recall. Recall means remembering. So if you ask a question and it's too hard to remember the answer, you're going to get the wrong answer. Then let's look at hidden bias. Now that's a little bit different and it's hidden, so it's harder to see. But usually this has to do with how you construct questions and, and how you put them forth. And then finally we have uh, interviewer influence. And of course you can only have that if you actually have an interviewer involved. So uh, surveys don't have that problem. Okay, let's go on with our questions. Question nine, the question asks, what religion are you? looks like a survey, so probably isn't D, okay, um, and does not allow the person to answer that she or he is not religious or has no religion. So what religion are you and you don't get to choose atheist? Well, that's not under coverage because that doesn't have anything to do with sampling. And it doesn't have anything to do with remembering, so we're going to have to go for hidden bias, right, because they're going to have to put some answer that's not correct. Okay, let's go to um, 10. A fatherly male interviewer, okay, maybe it's going to be this one, um, is asked to do surveys with female nursing students about their safe sex practices. So yeah, you can see the interviewer, the choice of interviewer is unfortunate here. It might influence the answers. So that's possible to have interviewer influence. Okay, the next question, question 11, the question asks for details about the first week of work for people working at a factory for over 10 years. So do you remember your first day of work from over 10 years ago? We're talking about remembering faulty recall. Okay, our last question. You s send a student satisfaction survey to a sample of 100 library students and only 20 complete it and send it back to you. Well, <clears throat> that's probably under coverage, right? Because we're talking about sampling. You send it to all these people and only a few send it back. Well, what about the other people? They're probably maybe to satisfy. All right, well that's the end of chapter one quiz prep. I hope you're all prepared for the quiz and good luck.